What can you do if your loved one on hospice won't eat? So my short answer, unfortunately, is nothing, but let me explain. So let's talk about some of the reasons why your loved one isn't eating on hospice and what does that mean for you? So number one, your loved one is likely not needing as many calories because they're not expending as much energy. You know, back in the day, they were running around the house and getting outside and going to the garden. So they needed more energy. They needed more food to keep up with that energy. Now they are laying in bed all day or maybe just bed to chair. So their body knows it doesn't need that much caloric intake. Now I can hear you already. You're saying, well, exactly. We're trying to get them out of bed more to give them more energy. And if they eat, they'll have more energy so they can do the things. Well, one, I feel you. I understand. I, I hear this every day in my job, but what we need to focus on at the end of life, which your loved one is because they're on hospice is what they want, what their body needs. So if their body is only laying in bed all day or bed to chair, that is all their body can do. And we're not going to push that. And that's the same with food. We are not going to push them to eat. We are going to listen to their body and only give them what they want, if anything. So this leads me to my second point. Our bodies know how to die. Our bodies are fine tuned. They are built to survive birth. They are built to grow throughout our life and they are built to die. And when they are dying or starting to slowly shut down, which they are, um, if they're dying a natural death on hospice, their body knows what's going on and their body actually shuts down mechanisms in their brain to make them less hungry, to make them not want to eat because the body knows that it actually will feel better the less it eats and the less it drinks. I know that sounds counterintuitive for our healthy bodies, but when your loved one is dying a natural death on hospice, the best thing we can do is listen to that body because the body knows what it's doing. For example, many people think my loved one is dying because they're not hungry, but really it's your loved one is not hungry because they're dying. This is not like a person who's just been sick for a little bit and they don't have an appetite, but then they, they get well again and starting start, they start wanting to eat. This is not the case. This is a, uh, a body that is preparing for death. And when it's preparing for death, like I said before, it starts shutting down mechanisms, um, to help us do that. And one of those mechanisms is shutting down that hunger part of the brain to make you not hungry. So a good example would be like if you had the flu, right? And your body still needed nutrients to get, to get well. So you're still trying to eat, even though you're not hungry, a dying body does not need that. It, even if you tried to force the chicken soup on your loved one, it's not going, the body that's dying is not going to take that nutrients and get better or feel better or do what it's supposed to do with the energy that food's giving it. The body does not compute. It will not do anything. So uh, that's why we always suggest never to force any food, because even if you did, we have found even when people do, it does not make a difference. It does not help. If anything, it can make it worse. So let me be clear, by all means, if your loved one is awake and talking to you and saying they're hungry and saying they want food, give them whatever they want and as much as they want. Uh, especially e even if they're saying stuff like, I just want ice cream all day, or I just want cookies, or I just want that cheeseburger, or I just want McDonald's fries, whatever it is, they are allowed to have it. This is not a time to like stick to their diabetic diet, or don't give them something fatty and greasy or don't give them diet Coke because it's bad for them. This is not the time. If they are asking for any kind of food, whatever they want, of course they can get it. So you never want to withhold food. Um, you just listen to what they're telling you. Now, what if they can't tell you? What if they're nonverbal and they can't speak and you actually have to feed them? I would go by what their body's saying. So their body will start telling you, and I'm sure for those of you listening who are already caring for a loved one like this at home, know what I mean. There are some days when your loved one's going to easily take that spoon of mashed potatoes. And then there's some days where they're going to hold their mouth shut or turn their face or just refuse to swallow the food. So when that is happening, when you're having those days, that's the time when you back off, you do not force them to eat. You can always go back in a couple hours and try again and see if they'll take it. But if they won't, then you just let them be. Even if that means they don't eat all day. That is you listening to their body. 
And then of course you try again the next day and maybe you'll have a different story the next day. It just depends. So you always want to try and see how they do that day. Don't force anything. The last thing we can talk about is tube feedings. What if you are watching this and your loved one has tube feeds where they don't take anything by mouth, but they get food, nutrition through a tube in their stomach. This can be hard to know when, uh, if they're tolerating it or not, if they're taking it in, you know, how they're doing. My suggestion for you is one, always consult the doctor, always talk to your doctor about what's best for your loved one. And two, the way you can um, kind of gauge if they're tolerating the tube feed as well as they once did is by seeing how well their body's responding to it. Do you give them tube feed and they, they stay bloated, right? For, for hours, they look uncomfortable. Do you give tube feeds and you see the tube feed leaking out around the tube or coming back out regurgitating through the tube? That can be signs that they are not tolerating that amount of tube feed anymore and you may need to start having to back off the tube feed. Again, this is always something you wanna talk about with your doctor and make sure, see what they think, but those would be two different signs that your loved one is no longer tolerating at least the amount of tube feeds you're giving them. And the reason why we don't ever wanna force anything, right? Force food through, like sometimes people use syringes and try to like force food and water down people's throats or just force feeding with a spoon or even force feeding with tube feeds because uh, that will lead your loved one to be high risk for aspiration pneumonia. The biggest risk for people uh, with like dementia or Parkinson's or who um, have had a stroke and now need fed through either G-tube or by another person, like the number one thing that happens to them, the biggest complication is aspiration pneumonia. And that is because we're forcing something into their mouth and then that food goes into not their stomachs, but their lungs. And then that causes pneumonia. So um, that's why I always say forcing things could actually be more harmful than helpful. So I know this can feel so counterintuitive to not be feeding your loved one. Uh, it almost, you know, a lot of people associate food with love. And if we're not giving them the food, we're not giving them love. And that can be, that's just the furthest thing from the truth. Hence why I wanna make a whole entire video <laughs> to educate you about how to care for your loved one on hospice. Not eating at the end of life is a natural and normal thing. And you don't have to feel guilty if your loved one is not eating, it's normal. You wanna to listen to their bodies and let them be the guide. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more death and dying information.